What's up, y'all? It's your boy 15 Moves Ahead coming to you with another video. Okay, today I want to talk about intentions. Now, in the 48 Laws of Power, I need you to grab your book. On the preface, turn to the preface. Look at page XXI, the third paragraph. If you go to this page in the preface to the 48 Laws of Power, the third paragraph, you're going to see a paragraph that deals with intentions now before we dive into it i want to point something out right robert green <laughs> is clearly explaining something about intentions and in today's world intentions seem to be something people often use to advance their agendas it happens in relationships employment social circles, family gatherings, you know, obligations, responsibilities, co-parenting, whatever you can think of, intentions are being used as a way to justify behaviors or to justify power grabs in today's world. And I want to talk about this. To the right of this book are 10 of the most common phrases you will hear that a person will use to justify their actions. Now, these are intention statements. Number one, I did this because you can fill in the blanks. Have you ever had someone do something to you? A partner, a supervisor, an employee, a family member, co-worker, lover, whatever the case may be, a person do something and you ask them, why did this happen? Like what happened? And they tell you, I did this because that's the intention statement. What they're not focusing in on is their actions have caused you pain. Their actions have caused you mental suffering. Their actions have caused you a social demise. And all they can do is give you their intention as to why they did it. Let's go down to number three. Let's say you're dating someone and your lover goes to a party with their girlfriend and they stay out all night and come home at six in the morning. Or let's say your your husband, he's drinking with his partners and he stay out at a bar all night and he don't come home to seven in the morning. The third phrase is a phrase you often hear. This only happened because I had too many beers. This only happened because I had too many shots of Patron. This only happened because that's the intention statement. But what they're failing to realize is that they stayed out all night. <laughs> that's all that matter. They stayed out all night. Now, it gets good if you really think about this, right? Um, so let's go into the, to the paragraph. It's very interesting. Okay. Robert Greene says power is essentially a moral and one of the most important skills to acquire is the ability to see circumstances rather than good or evil. Power is a game. This cannot be repeated too often. And in games, you do not judge your opponents by their intentions, but by the effect of their actions. You measure their strategy and their power by what you can see and feel. How often are someone's intentions made the issue only to cloud and deceive? What does it matter if another player, your friend or rival, intended good things and had only your interests at heart if the effects of his action led to so much ruin and confusion? It is only natural for people to cover up their actions with all kinds of justifications, always assuming that they have acted out of goodness. You must learn to inwardly laugh each time you hear this and never get caught up engaging someone's intentions and actions through a set of moral judgments that are really an excuse for the accumulation of power. Let's talk about it. Amoral is a word in the dictionary that means neither good nor bad, neither moral nor immoral. So power is essentially not good or bad. It, it isn't either one. People talk about power as if it's a bad thing. People talk about power as if it's an all good thing. But power is neither. The most one of the most important skills to acquire 
It's the ability to see circumstances rather than good or evil. So you have to learn how to see circumstances rather than seeing good or evil. Your partner that stayed out overnight. Look at the circumstance. Don't look at if it was the wrong thing to do or the right thing to do. Just look at the circumstance. Remove your feelings from that situation and you can see the circumstance as clear as day. <laughs> it's very deep. Power is a game. This cannot be repeated too often. And in games, you do not judge your opponents by their intentions, but by the effect of their actions. Think about playing Monopoly. Think about playing the game of chess. Think about playing the game of checkers. You don't have time to sit down and figure out someone's intentions. You only can see they pushed a piece on a certain part. They only did something. You're looking at what they have done. The effects of their actions that should make you think by looking at what they are doing, not intending. Look at the fact that your partner did not come home. Look at the fact that your partner is staying at their corporate office at nine o'clock at night. Look at the fact that they're not answering their phone in a time that they're supposed to just whatever the case may be. Just look at the effects of their actions. What is it causing you? You measure their strategy and their power by what you can see and feel. So you need to learn how to measure what this person is doing by what you can see and feel. You slept in the bed by yourself all night. You was home alone all night. That's what you've seen. That's what you felt. How often are someone's intentions made the issue only to cloud and deceive? What does it matter if another player, your friend or rival intended good things and had only your interests at heart? If the effects of his action led to so much ruin and confusion, what does it matter if you're telling me you spent my credit card, you maxed the credit card out because you didn't know how I was going to act if I would have if you would have purchased me one pair of shoes. Instead, you bought five because you didn't know if I was going to like this first pair. Like it doesn't matter the intention. If the effects of the action cause you ruin and confusion, your partner had an affair with his or her co-worker and everybody know about it. And the only excuse they can give you is I had too many drinks at the party or I think someone put something in my coffee. Whatever excuse they give you is just an excuse because of a failed effect. Their intentions does not matter. Oh, I only intended on just having one shot of vodka. I ended up playing truth or dare and had 10. I couldn't find my car keys and I fell asleep on the couch. There's all kind of justifications, okay? You must learn to inwardly laugh each time you hear this and never get caught up engaging someone's intentions and actions through a set of moral judgments that are really an excuse for the accumulation of power. Let me talk to you about a set of moral judgments, okay? People will give you moral judgments all the time. They'll, you know, hit you with the Ten Commandments. They'll hit you with, well, in my family, this is how we do it. They'll hit you with, well, um, all my life I've done things this way and this is how it is and this is why it seems like that. They'll give you every excuse possible. They will give you a set of moral judgments that are nothing but a cover up. Nothing but an excuse for them to continue to accumulate power. I guarantee you someone watching this video feel exactly what I'm saying, because it seems every time you turn around, you're being hurt. You're being lied to. You're being disrespected. You're being dishonored. But all of that somehow magically wipes away because of an intention. But please do not forget what you felt and what you seen. And with that being said, I'm out.